Hello again, this is Sandra Hart. Thank you so much for stopping by to spend some time with me today. Arthur is out of the hospital and hopefully we will be able to resume a rather normal life. But this week I've had a lot of time to think about something that I want to share with you today. I often think about the house that I left back in New Jersey all of those memories of 44 years living there are still with me today. One thing about memories that is so nice, when you travel, you remember the beauty of things in your life, your high school graduation, enjoying time with your children, all of the wonderful things are stored within our memories and are there for easy recall to share with others. Several things happened to me this week that made me think about what I want to talk about today. The very first thing is that I had a lot of time in the hospital to sit and wait and read. So I found a book, uh, The Art of Making Memories by Mike Weeking. And it's all about memories and whether childhood memories are stronger than memories we have now and how we can create memories today that will last us for a long time. That was the first thing that happened to me. And then the second thing that happened, I had a comment by one of my subscribers, Yvonne, and she said, oh, it's, I just found your channel. It's so exciting. It's a small world. I used to work with your son at the Hollywood Athletic Club. Now, that brought back really happy memories for me because when my son first went out to Los Angeles to you know, try his music and acting, he uh, had a job and he worked at the Hollywood Athletic Club. And um, Arthur and I would go out and visit him. As a matter of fact, Arthur still has the original T-shirt, the Hollywood Athletic T-shirt. But it brought back happy memories of my son and Los Angeles and his starting out his career and how proud I was of his work ethics and was praying that he would be successful. So that brought back a really good memory for me. And then something else happened. I came home and I found, I, got, I had gotten a catalog. And believe it or not, it was the J. Peterman catalog. Remember Seinfeld and um, when and and J. Peterman catalog and when Elaine worked for J. Peterman and uh, that was a catalog that was very popular in the late 70s and early 80s and um, I thought wow that brings back a lot of memories for me not only of Elaine and Seinfeld but I also learned that one of the major owners now of J. Peterman is the actor who played the part on the Seinfeld show but I thought it was really fun perusing through the catalogs and seeing all the, the great um, sketches that are in there of the clothing. And then, <laughs> while I was in the hospital, I watched one of my favorite uh, beauty uh, YouTubers, and he was talking about blush draping. That's the only reason I really turned in, because I said, blush draping, what is that? He had me so curious. But blush draping is just like putting blush on your nose, on here, and then this, and this, and then you kind of blend it all in, and that's called blush draping. And I told my daughter about it, and she said, Mother, what's the matter with you? Don't you remember back in the late 70s and early 80s, Indian Earth? And I thought, wow, you're right. She said, we used to do the same thing. We take the Indian earth and that puff and we would put it here and we would put it there and we would put it all over our face and we would put it on our lips. And basically that's blush draping. <laughs> so I thought, you know, you're right. But it took me back to the era where I and my daughters were blush draping with Indian earth. <laughs> so um, it got me so excited that I went online on Amazon and I bought a pot of Indian Earth, and I am going to do a video, probably pretty soon, on blush draping with Indian Earth. But boy, all of those took things took me way back to a period other than today. 
And they do say that childhood memories, through studies that I read in this book, childhood memories imprint much much more uh, uh, tightly into our brain than memories that we make when we're in our 30s and 40s. Because in our 30s and 40s, we've got a lot going on here and there. And somehow, we really don't deeply experience things as closely and as deeply as we do when we're children. I want you to think about that. What are the uh, memories that you really feel are so, you can remember maybe a fragrance, music, um, something that you see that reminds you of something in your childhood. When I was a little girl living on my grandparents' farm, they didn't have electricity. So I remember sitting by the fire, they would light the kerosene lamps so that that smell of kerosene probably, to me, is a warm and fuzzy smell. To others, it may not be it at all. But when I smell kerosene, it takes me back to those wonderful days on my grandparents' farm. And I'm sure you have something like that as well. But they have, but um, Mike in this book has talked about several things that we can do as adults to help us build memories right now and to help us maybe make them stay longer and a little bit more fun. And the first thing is that the first quick trick is don't see. Don't just see. Observe. Deeply observe what's going on around you. Deeply observe that moment when your grandchild is being baptized or, or when you're attending a wedding or when you're taking a trip to a foreign country. Really observe what is going on around you. And as I said before, as adults, sometimes we're so distracted because we've got other things going on and happening in our lives. The second thing to do is to talk about your experiences. Make stories of experience to share with others, with your children and with your grandchildren. Tell them about what you did or, or even what you did in the past so that that muscle memory will build up. Share your life and share your recent experiences that are so joyful for you. Share those with your friends, your family, and your children. Because honestly, when I think about it, I wish that I had asked more questions of my parents so that I could know more about them, so that I could have more memories about who they were and what made them special. But it really helps to build muscle memory by repeating uh, things that have happened to you that you feel that are building memories for you and you want your family to also share those memories with you. And while you are enjoying whatever, wherever you are in a foreign country, at a wedding or at a wonderful picnic, whatever, at a concert, and just try to eliminate all the adult distract, distractions around you. You know, when you're children, you're kind of focused in on, wow, you know, that's such a beautiful necklace or whatever, you know, you're focused in. So try to eliminate distractions around you so that you really are living in the moment, and we've talked about that for a long time, and being in the present, because that really will help you an awful lot to do that. But um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, the fourth, is enjoy the journey. Really enjoy it. Be there, experiences, experience it, and just have the pleasure of, of, of that moment. I know so, so many times, and I am so guilty of this, I will be somewhere, and maybe it's at a concert, maybe it's at an event, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, golly, what do I have to do tomorrow? Oh, did I turn off the lights, or where's my key? I mean, I, <laughs> I sometimes have things going on in my head, and it distracts me, from really enjoying the journey that uh, is making memories for me that when I get into the future a few years later, I can say, oh, I remember when I did that. It was really wonderful. Or, or that concert was so fantastic. The musicians were, were just breathtaking. And you can feel, you can feel and you can hear the violins and you can feel that moment. But whatever your memory is, you know, not mine exactly, but whatever your memory is, 
drink it in and don't just see it and be there. Put your head and just be there in the moment. And that is the way that you do build memories. Okay, those things all came to me this week. I had so many things that brought me back to other times in my life. And I thought, wow, you know, we don't really talk about memories very often. And I thought that this might be a good thing for all of us to do. So because we have such a wonderful community here and we're all sharing, share a memory that has been really vivid for you that you want to share and tell us what brings that memory back to you. Is it a sound? Is it a smell? Um, a, 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 a song? What is it that really makes you all of a sudden now at your age, oh, I remember that. It was so delightful and I'm so happy that I have that memory and then I can share it. Thank you for joining me today. Be kind to yourself and, and be kind to whomever crosses your path. Please share the love and don't forget to pray for world peace. Take care and I hope to see you in my next video.